Welcome back to Challenge TV, the show for people interested in the Maxine's Shape Up and the Max's Muscle Up 12 Week Transformation Challenge. So we all know that nutrition is a massive part of transforming your physique. So with that in mind, we've got super duper master coach Janet Kane giving you the lowdown, the goss, the hints, the strategies on how to maximize your nutrition as the challenge rolls around on Feb 23. Hi guys, today we're going to have a look at nutrition. Before the challenge starts, there's a few things that you can put into place to ensure you get the best results. Let's have a look at a few tips and tricks to get you on your way. Going cold turkey can be hard. Often the first few weeks can be the hardest to adapt to a new way of eating with many habits to break. So the first thing you need to do is start cleaning up your diet now, right now, to help you get more accustomed to the change and give you the edge for the successful start to the 12 week challenge. You ensure a great start by allowing your mind and body to adapt to change. Start by having a food diary and recording your intake of food for each day. Increase your water intake so it's up to two to three litres per day. I like to grab a large 800ml to a one litre size bottle to allow for easy drinking and measuring. It's easy to drink more when you have a full bottle in front of you for the day and easy to calculate your day's intake. Okay, now we get some tough challenges, pardon the pun, but let's see how many you can do. Try and do as many as you can. If you can't do them all, that's okay. The more you do, the more results you'll achieve. First up, empty out all of the snack foods, packaged junk processed items from the pantry. That includes biscuits, chocolates, lollies, snacks, chips, whatever. They've got to go. I did say this was a tough one, but things have to go. So if you're struggling with giving it away, getting rid of it, give it away to someone, but just get it out of the kitchen. The next tip is to remove all the junk food or anything that you know is bad from the fridge. When you make room in your fridge and freezer for some healthy food by removing all the other stuff, this will save the temptation too. If you're someone who's got kids or family in the household and you're wondering how you're going to get rid of all the other food in the house, the easiest way is to get them on board with you. Or, reality is, there might be some other food in the house that's purely family food. Just separate it from yourself. If you keep it in a separate area and know it's not yours, you'll be good. Once you've done that, try and stop eating the junk food, the sweets, the savoury items, and certainly those snacks that you have with a cup or a beer when you're out of the house, at work or at friends, because we know we have those social gatherings. On that front also, if you're having tea and coffee, try and reduce it, especially if you add milk and sugar to every cup. Remember, this is progressive, so if you're used to having two sugars, reduce it to one, and then eventually none, so step by step, you're bringing it down. Also try and reduce and remove all soft drinks, alcohol and fruit juices from your diet. Best option is to replace these with water, particularly as we want to increase that to two to three litres a day. Alcohol can be a tricky thing, particularly if you're used to socialising a couple of times a week. If you're used to having a couple of wines out or a few beers, just like the coffee, let's reduce it. Maybe go out a few less nights, taper back the amount that you are having and progressively reduce them. You'll find the challenge will become a lot simpler for you as you reduce the alcohol intake. Remove all of the takeaway price lists and order forms from your house and your phone, particularly if you've got any apps for them. You don't want to be tempted with ordering. Stop having takeaway foods, but particularly, start getting used to cooking your own meals. This is a big part of the challenge, so if you're just not a cook, it's time to start learning. Most families have a drawer with the takeaway menus and order forms in them. If you're like that, the best thing you can do is just remove it. Take them away, take the temptation away, because throughout the challenge, you're probably gonna find that drawer. So let's get rid of it now. It'll make it much easier throughout the challenge and a greater success chance for you. Get organized with your meal plan too. There are some sample plans on the website when the challenge is not on, and start to take your meals to work rather than buying takeaway or snacking. When you practice what you eat at work and during the daytime, you'll avoid bad choices. Nearly everyone that falls off the nutrition plan and makes bad choices simply is not prepared. So the answer's simple. Get prepared and practice being perfect at it. Rethink the sorts of marinades, sauces and condiments you add to your meals. Start checking the labels for the added salt and sugar. Best option, reduce or remove these from your diet if you can. 
Get used to eating lots of vegetables. Believe me, your body will love you for it. Start reading food labels and understand nutrition breakdowns, such as protein, fats, sugars, salts, calories if you can. Now this is something that you'll learn more about during the challenge, but it's never too early to start. When you do, you'll get a much better understanding of what you're eating and the effect it's having on your body, whether it's good or bad. Now you don't need to spend a million dollars, but there are a few things that you need along the way. And if you can't get them all, that's okay, just do your best. First up, for ease of cooking, think about getting the following things for your kitchen. A rice cooker, a contact grill like a George Foreman or a good non-stick fry pan, some chopping boards and baking trays and a good knife set. Grab a cooler bag and ice bricks to have as a lunch bag or a day bag that will fit at least two to three meals for a day trip. Get as many storage containers for all your meals as you can. Believe me, they'll be vital in getting the best result. Grab some Snaplock freezer bags. They're a good option for that also. Lastly, if you wanna get really serious, get a set of kitchen scales. Probably not something you'll start out with needing, but as you get more advanced with this stuff, you'll find weighing your food is quite important. Lastly, now's about time to start practicing the spiel for why you're doing this challenge to your friends and your family. Tell your friends and family why you're doing this challenge. The easiest way to get them on board is to tell them why, and they might even do it with you. They'll offer you support and encouragement along the way, but just explain to them why you're doing it and why it's important to you. Hopefully that's given you some tips and tricks to get yourself started. But as always, jump on the website for some more information. That's it for now, and we'll catch you next time. In my early 20s, I would say that I was fit, but I was a little bit more of a cardio person. I would enjoy swimming or running. And I played a lot of sport, and then I got married, and then I settled into life, and I probably stopped a little bit until we wanted to start a family, and I thought, well, maybe I need to get a little bit more fit. I packed on a few kilos and started my weight loss journey at around the age of about 30. There was a catalyst for me, and it was I suffered migraines on a daily basis. I was fairly stressed at work and that had to change. So I changed absolutely everything. I left my work, I changed my diet in an instant, but it was a gradual change because my learning gradually changed and step by step I increased or, and changed my exercise. I worked into just getting healthier with my food choices. I'd lost about 17 kilos, so I'd lost a fair amount of weight in about six or eight months. And I thought, this is quite good, so I exercised a little bit more, and it got into the winter months. And so I joined a gym to walk on their treadmill <laughs> and got encouraged to lift some weights. And, and the first thing I said was, but I don't want to be, be a big hurly-burly girl by lifting weights, I'll just steer away from that, and I'll be happily on the exercise bike until I was encouraged to do some weight movement. So as I started, I could see some shape and it was really quite encouraging for me. And but I was just looking for the next challenge. And it kind of found me where someone suggested it. So I actually went along to a show and was really quite surprised and thought that that's something that I would enjoy doing. I, I thought it would be kind of like a, an end of my journey, not really the start. From there over the years, I've been very fortunate to have achieved numerous state titles. To go on and win a national title was just the, the most mind-blowing thing, but I, I have since won the Australian titles four times. Along the way, it was what's next, and there is no higher achievement than Natural Olympia. The Natural Olympia is the best of the best in bodybuilding, are eligible to compete. So that opportunity was kind of my calling to let's just step it up another level and see what I can do. But to win in there was, I literally cried on stage. It just meant the absolute world to me. It was one of my biggest highlights. As master coach, I hope to bring a lot of assistance to people in the areas that I've personally gained experience. I've walked all those steps and I've applied a lot of knowledge along the way, whether it be from a mindset coaching or whether it be from a personal tip that might be a cooking recipe, just some impact. Every person's life I touch, I, I want to have an impact that helps them achieve something they're looking to do. Everyone's got a personal journey and I like being part of that journey. I like having the connection. 
with people and that connection is what gives results. And whilst I am results focused, I'm very much focused on each of the steps along the way. So as anything, uh, the, the journey is wayward. Things happen, you go up and down along the way. The challenge is not an easy one. So being a coach is not just a matter of this is what you need to do and it's structured to the end. That gives results, but it's not really the kind of person I am as a mother and as, as a caring person. I like getting involved in, in everybody's story. So it's right down to, to knowing as much as I possibly can to help someone achieve is what makes me walk those steps with people. As long as they're on that same pathway, um, I'm there to carry them through. So my chain, train is going through. Jump on board, because we're all going to that same journey. Some people hop off along the way, other people come along, but we're all going on that same journey. And I enjoy taking people with me. So along the way, throughout the, throughout the whole 12 weeks, it's, um, it is a real connection. And that's what brings results.